Hi everyone, this is Dr. Funke Afalabi Brown, the founder of Respo Sleep MD. Today I would like to talk about a question that I get frequently, and that is what form of sleep training is best for my baby? So I'll just start first even with the question, should I sleep train my baby? What is sleep training? I get a lot of those questions too. The way I see sleep training, because of course, when you check on Google and check online, you're going to find all kinds of information. But the way I see sleep training is it's just a method or a mechanism of helping your child achieve independent sleep. Because who doesn't want that for their baby, right? We go through different milestones with our children. And so, you know, at some point they're putting up their head, they're smiling, they're rolling over, they start crawling, they start walking. So the same way you want them to be able to achieve that independence where you put them down to sleep, they fall asleep on their own and they wake up on their own. It's skills that you're giving your child that will last them through their childhood and, and potentially through life, just really being able to uh, fall asleep independently without relying on you. Now, if you look out there, there's so many methods and, you know, one method seems to argue that they're better than the other method. And as a parent, I can imagine that it's quite overwhelming. And so what you'll see sometimes is, you know, some people will say, yes, cry it out, nip it in the bud and be done with it. Others will say, you know what, you need to check in and the Ferber method or, you know, let's try some kind of modification or a mix of all three or four or five, depending on where you're looking. So essentially, one thing, regardless of what method of sleep training you decide to adopt for your baby, research has shown that regardless of the method, children are able to achieve independent sleep and every method is successful. The key is, does it work for you? So what I will say is to your question, what method of sleep training is best for my baby? My answer is, or my question back to you is, whatever method works for you to get your baby to fall asleep independently. And I think the important thing is realizing that from the get-go, before you even decide to embark upon a sleep training journey to say, what method works for me, for my personality, for my baby, for my tolerance level, my stress level? Those are questions you have to answer for yourself. And a sleep coach, um, a sleep consultant may be able to help you navigate that and find that sweet spot for you. But I would say that that's something that you have to first ask yourself to start. So now, what are the various forms? Again, there's a lot going on out there. There are modifications that are going on out there. I would say there are three broad um, sort of themes. Uh, the first is the one I mentioned before. It's the famous or maybe not so popular cry it out method. It turns out that potentially quite effective in the sense that it hurts in the beginning, but you kind of get the job done, you know, within a short amount of time. And what that is, is you put your baby down, you walk out of the room, you kiss them goodnight, and then you don't see them again till morning. Of course, you could use a monitor or something, making sure they're okay. That's it. It's kind of also known as full extinction. So <laughs> even that word sounds pretty intense, right? But some families swear by it they're able to tolerate that crying and they're able to just move on. The second broad stroke is kind of like a version of the full extinction, which is kind of graduated extinction, meaning that you're eliminating that need for the parent or someone at bedtime, but you're doing it in a graduated method. And so what that may involve could be checking in you know once you say goodbye to the baby you walk out of the room you shut the door and then scheduled check-ins so you're checking in briefly making sure they're okay and you're walking right out the door and that length of time people will ask well how long is a good length of time to check in it all depends on you for some families it may be three minutes for some families they can't even wait that long because maybe the baby is crying and so you're going in 
maybe you'll say every two minutes to start go and check in make sure the baby's okay reassure them everything's okay avoid picking them up because sometimes that makes them even more riled up put them back and walk or you know check in with them and just walk out and then over time you can start to increase those check-ins until they're able to fall asleep if this is something that you feel would work for you you go for it go for it give it a try and you can decide okay i can only stand 30 seconds of my baby crying for some babies every time you you go back in they may even get more frustrated and in that case it may actually be better not to check in at all so you can modify it do you see what i'm saying so find what will work for you find what will work for your family if you feel like oh my goodness i can't i thought i could handle it well go back to the drawing board and find what works for you and then the last one you may famously hear things like camping out um sort of faded extinction or parental fading um, something else you may hear may be like the chair method. So essentially what that is, is you're in the room, you're with your baby, and then over time, you progressively start moving yourself out of the room. And so what that would look like is initially, if you're someone who holds your baby to sleep, you may put them to sleep in the awake in their crib now, and then sit right next to them. Try to avoid laying, depending on, you know, of course, I'm assuming your baby would be in a crib at this point. And then over time, you move your chair closer and closer to the door until you get out. If they're crying, you could just provide very uh, monotonous reassurance. Try not to engage too much. And then, you know, they're eventually able to fall asleep. As you can see, we're kind of moving from, you know, limited parental interaction to sort of less, um, more and more and more. Then the, the last one I would say, if we're going to say call it that, is what some people would consider would be maybe a no crime method. So essentially what you're doing is promoting healthy sleep habits promoting healthy sleep habits. So having a bedtime routine, just really having the child learn that it's time for bed. Though that method, you can imagine you're completely part of the baby's bedtime. And then over time, this their body starts to learn that it's time to fall asleep. Again, you're really involved there, depending on how exhausted or tired you are. You may want to go with that method or go with something that has you know less um, interaction at bedtime. I would say sleep training or teaching a child to fall asleep independently is helpful in, you know, reducing nighttime weekends. It's helpful in promoting longer sleep duration in children. And it's helpful in ensuring healthy um, maternal health. So um, parental depression is lower, parental stress and anxiety becomes lower. And there are no known studies that have shown any adverse effect of sleep training in children, even over the long term. So it's effective regardless of the method you choose. You are the one that has to decide this is what will work for me versus another. And you can feel free to try to incorporate some modifications that would work for you. Of course, if you feel like your child has a medical problem, if you feel like you're not sure if your child is ready to be sleep trained, or if you feel like your child needs frequent feeding at nighttime, it's really important to speak with your ped your pediatrician before you even start at all. And so I hope that's been helpful. I hope that's really helped you to see that there's no perfect method out there. I would say they all work and every child can learn to achieve independent sleep. You just have to find what really works for you and what works for your baby. So this has been helpful. I would love it if, to, if you share this video, if you comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way, once content comes, you'll be the first to know. And then also, if you do have teenagers in your home, in your life, there's a Sleep in Teens course that I have available, which is an excellent way to get our teenagers to sleep. Because not only do our newborns and babies have sleep issues our teenagers have a whole lot of them so definitely check that out on my website restfulsleepmd.com slash sleep courses until next time i hope you rest well